In this video, we're going to talk about how to separate portions of a form body in Fusion 360. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And in this video, we're going to talk about Fusion 360 forms like we do in a lot of videos. But specifically, we're going to talk about how to separate out portions of your form body so we can have things like a cockpit or doors that are on a design. So what we have here on the screen is a Riley 9 Brooklyn. This is an old race car. One of the subscribers is working on actually building this thing. And this is a picture that I found online. You can see that uh, it has a copyright on it, Max Vorgers. So make sure that we give credit to that person. This is a very beautiful and elegant design, and it's actually really tricky to model. So as always, you can go to the description of the video and you can download the data set that you see. This is just something I threw together that was similar to that. So it has some canvases in here that you can play around with. And I threw a couple fenders in there as well. But what we wanna do is we wanna cut out a portion of the design so that it's open for the driver. And then we also want to separate a portion of the body so that way we can have doors. So what we wanna do with this first is we're gonna finish the form, which converts it to a surface body. So you can see now we've got the main body and we've got the fenders. For right now, I'm gonna hide the fenders because we don't really need to see them. I'm gonna to navigate to my surface tab. I'm gonna turn my canvas back on, specifically the side. I don't need to see the top. And what I wanna do first is figure out a way to cut out the cockpit. So in order to do this, we need to create a sketch. I'm gonna pick my right plane, which is my XZ plane. And then I need to create a sketch to cut this out. Now for me, that's gonna be a line that comes down to here. Then I'm gonna hold down the left mouse button at the end, which turns this into an arc. And then from here, I want to carry this on in an arc. So you'll notice if I hold the left mouse button, it kind of gets messed up with the tangency. It still has tangency, but it doesn't look quite right. So you might need to just move things around a little bit until you're happy with it. The curvature appears to change a bit around here, but I do want to stick with these arcs and just kind of move them around until I'm happy with their positions and their sizes. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're just Essentially, we're just looking at the process. I'm gonna do one more arc. I know this is really hard to see over the canvas, so um, you're just gonna to have to bear with me for a second and we'll take a look at it. So I'll give those tangency, and again, get it kind of close. You could also do this with a spline if you wanted to. Splines are, are okay, but they do inherently prevent you from offsetting them in, in some instances. So you can see that I'm, I'm having trouble with this bottom section here. So I'm gonna delete those two and I'm gonna use a spline. So I'm gonna go from here up to the end, say okay. I'm gonna make these two tangent. And then I am going to increase the handle weight here. And you can see that gets me pretty close. That looks pretty good. So we'll finish the sketch. I'm gonna hide my canvas and bring back the main body. So what we've essentially done is we've created a side view of that cut. And if the design is okay with that, then all we really need to do is trim. We'll select our trim tool, and then we need to pick the portion of it that we wanna get rid of. And now we've got the opening. So that looks okay. It's always a good idea to double check from the top view to make sure that the scale of everything that you've done is okay. This looks pretty good. And obviously we're just dealing with a low res blueprint, but I'm, I'm happy with that so far. So I can hide that sketch. And that was a way that we could get rid of some of the body. But what if we want to trim it and keep the other portions of it? So this is where it gets a little bit trickier. So let's bring our canvases back. I'm going to, once again, do a sketch on the side. This time, these are definitely going to be some straight lines. And you can see that it actually falls in line with this edge right here, which is actually pretty good for us. So I'm gonna use Create, Project Include, and Project. And I just wanna grab that edge there gonna hit escape and I'm gonna convert it to construction. I just wanted to have it as a reference. I don't necessarily need to use it, but this gives me something where I can go just below it if I want to, and I can use a, a dimension to get there. All right, so we're gonna come down. I'm gonna keep these perpendicular or, or rel relatively close to it. We're gonna come back. Once again, this is really hard to see on the body, but uh, I want to have the body there so I know where the edges are. If it's trying to snap to parallel or horizontal, just hold down the control key and we'll temporarily override that. And then we'll bring this one up vertical, making sure that we're extending all the way through the body. 
Now, if we really want to manage things like door gaps or, or seams, we can go to offset and we can offset this a little bit outwards. I want to make sure that I'm not overlapping this original section here. And then I can just connect the ends with lines so that I have a complete closed profile. That is important to make sure that we use it as a single, a single profile when we do this. So we're going to finish the sketch. And now we have to decide how we can cut this away from the body. Now, a couple of different ways that we can do this. We can do a trim. Now, if we use this as a trim tool, then we need to pick the area that we want to get rid of, which means finding that little section right there. And I'm only going to do it on one side for this example. And you can see that we were able to separate out the door. Now I can hide the door, we can add a joint to it and, and have it hinge. Obviously, the opening, the gap that I have is pretty big. It's just exaggerated. But sometimes trim doesn't work or sometimes you don't actually have the entire door gap. If that's the case, then oftentimes you can go to split body. In this case, you'll select the body you want to split, the splitting tool, and then you allow it to extend outward. You can see that did it on the other side. However, this one leaves the door seam. It doesn't remove it like it does with trim. Now this is a benefit in a lot of cases because we can go to a top view, we can use modify move copy, I'm going to reset that pivot point because right now it's based on the coordinates, the, it's based on the origin of the body. What I want to do is I want to bring back my origin and set it here. And then I can just select this and I can move that seam in a specific amount. I'm going to just say five inches. This, this body is nowhere near to scale. And now what I did was I made that seam, I moved it in. Now the reason that this is important is because now we can use that as the seam for the fender or the rest of the body or the back of the door, whatever we need to. So it maintains that as a portion of the design as a surface and then we can use it later on. If that doesn't happen to work, the other option is for us to use split face. That is not going to break the design apart like those two options, but it will allow us to then come back and do something like an offset. You want to make sure you turn off chain selection, but you can offset a specific piece. Let's say that we wanted to make this tail piece here. What that allows me to do is just copy that one piece. So now you can see that I've got this little tail piece here that I could just work with. So again, there are a bunch of different ways that we can go about this process. That main body is that door seam there. This one here is the door on one side, the main body and the door on the other side. So those are a couple different methods. Sometimes one method works better than another. Part of it is based on the curvature of your design. In this case, we're really looking at something directly from the side, which makes it a whole lot easier. If your seams or your gaps tend to go over the design, over the curvature or wrap around a corner, then it becomes a little bit trickier. Another thing that's important to note is, for example, I could make an offset plane. Let's go ahead and just pull this offset plane forward to the radiator up front. And we could do the same thing with split body or trim by using a plane. So I'm gonna select the body, my trim tool is the plane, and now I've just separated out the nose cone, or the in this case, the radiator shell. So now we're able to use those tools to sort of break up the body however we want. Once again, this design, with the exception of all the, the seams and the cuts, is available for download in the description of the video. If you have any questions, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.